three. We live, man. Yeah, that boy. It's the kid, Yuck Mouth, with the homie. Nelson L. in the motherfucking building, man. This is another episode of Higher Learning, man. You know what I mean? Where we give you the positive vibes, not the negative vibes. You know what I mean? Where we give you the motherfucking knowledge without going to college. You feel me? Straight up, man. So my bro, bro got a deep conversation, man, that we all ask about, man. Everybody ask about what is this whole life is about? Like, where did it start? Where is the creation? What is our purpose? You know what I mean? We always have those questions in the back of our mind. You know what I mean? Like, what is my purpose here? You know what I mean? Why were we made? You know what I mean? What? When did we start? You know what I mean? Like, when was this beautiful design called the human being or mankind designed and made? And what was our purpose? So the homie Nelson L, man, he going to give us some good knowledge tonight. You know what I mean? Before we go into that one, man, we want to shout out to everybody in the chat room. I see everybody stepping in, creeping in. You know what I mean? Let's get the chat going. You know what I mean? Do the motherfucking tap in. But other than that, man, Nelson L, what's up with your playboy? Oh, uh, yeah, man. We're here now, man. Just let everybody tap in. And, uh, yeah, we're going to touch that, fam. We're going to get into uh, the creation and fall. And I know we kind of touched on it last week, but I really want to get into it. We're going to break down some of this book that I got, The Introduction to the Truth of Life. I can't really see who's all tapping in, but I know you probably already shouted out the different area codes and different places. So, you know, as we begin, man, first we got to give all praise due to the most high you know uh the creator of the universe then uh you, we give honors to the all the prophets uh you know his illustrious prophet prophet noble draw ali the day star uh, man so with that man being said shout out to you and let's let's dive in man because uh what i want to do is the book has seven chapters so i know we're not going to get into everything today uh, we're going to try to, you know, bring some uniformity to our conversation, but I want to start off kind of where we left and uh, shout out all the boys out there. Cause a lot of my big bros, they said, Mo, you got to make it plain, bro. You're talking about a lot of things and that's a whole lot of information being presented to the listener. And so we want to get a point of reference. So one thing I want to do, man, I want to bring, uh, bring the, bring the, Holy Quran or the more science temple of America to the table. And I'm not going to read the whole creation and fall, but I just want to give some perspective so we can get a point of reference in regard to who we are. Right. And so it says, um, the divine instructions from the Holy prophet chapter one, the creation and fall. And so I want to make, I want to get your perspective on this too. Yuck. When you hear this, you know, if we need to stop and analyze anything or break it down, you know, just, just, uh, you know, stop me right there. But like I said, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but it says. Yeah, you know, I'm going to have my questions, but the chat say I never let niggas talk, man. So I'm going to let you land. And then you let you ask me like, yo, yo, what you think about it? Because they, I, I got a habit of cutting motherfuckers off all the time, man. So you give a real knowledge that we need. So I'm going to calm my ass down, slow down, turbo, and let you out of flow. You feel me? You said the chat said what, bro? The chat say I be talking, over talking niggas and shit, man. So I'm gonna let you talk. You feel me? I had a flow, man, with no interruptions. You feel me? And then when you're ready to, you know what I mean, tap me in to say, yuck, what you think about this? And then I answer you. You know what I mean? Say less. Say Let's less. Let's so get it. So it says, uh, and we got the we got the book out, right? So it says, Tom never was when man was not. If life of man at any time began, a time would come when it would end. The thoughts of Allah cannot be circumscribed. No finite mind can comprehend things infinite. All finite things are subject unto change. All finite things will cease to be because there was a time when they were not. The bodies and the souls of men are finite things and they will change. Yea, from the finite point of view, the time will come when they will be no more. But man himself is not the body nor the soul. He is a spirit and a part of Allah. And I want to stop right there because we talk about this physical condition a lot, but we don't really talk about who we really are. And that's the spirit. We're a spiritual entity and the body is just a vehicle. 
that allows us to get around on this in this three-dimensional realm you know that we call our reality today you know what it's like um it's like when the astronauts go to space and they got a space suit so they can survive out there in that atmosphere this is our space suit for our soul this is our space outfit for us to survive on this earth definitely continue absolutely you know i call it a spaceship you know what i'm saying because you know we zoom we dip this is this is our vehicle right this is a spaceship so it allows us to travel uh around out down here you know and move and we move freely around here so when we really get to thinking about that we are a spirit then that that brings us to the next round because we haven't got to physical yet so we just want to talk about spirit and then we'll get work our way until we hit to the flesh and bone of things right so we need to really determine or get a, a, a comprehensive understanding on what is spirit right and so that brings me to my next book so see i thought last time we got to rocking um i didn't have all my receipts and everything ahead of me you know on hand so this book is a book that i wrote and it's uh titled the introduction to the truth of life and what i did with this book was i wanted to get away from everything that um say was just or like religious dogma or things that you know you would read in certain religious texts but really can't support um factually or, or you know a lot of stuff is myth and allegory and stuff like that so i wanted to get away from that um i wanted to get away from anything that wasn't the mathematical facts so the book itself is basically breaks down the seven fundamental principles of the universe consciousness correspondence vibration polarity rhythm cause and effect and gender so consciousness correspondence vibration polarity rhythm cause and effect and gender and so the first of these things are consciousness so we're back to the spirit so spirit if you're talking from a religious aspect right so you go to church or what have you they talk about the holy spirit right if you go to a uh scientist he'll call it energy right you cannot create energy you cannot destroy energy you can only transfer energy and then you can contain it the body we talked about the vehicle is actually a container of energy we're light beings and this is light energy right it's like a lighthouse so to speak and part of what this melanin whole demonstration in melanin demonstration is uh, has to do with the retention of light that we have right so we are light beings and so when we think about consciousness i want us to also make sure that we understand consciousness is synonymous with energy and energy is in, in, in the scientific realm you got energy in the spiritual realm you have consciousness or you have spirit rather from the religious realm and in the uh, psychological realm when we talk about psychology and how the mind works we call it consciousness right but all three of these things are the same so that we have to we have a a realm that exists simultaneously with the realm that we're in now. And so some call it the plane of soul or spirit realm. While this is a physical realm, we have these other realms that actually exist at the same time. And what I'm proposing to the audience today is if we understand how to control that spiritual conscious realm, then we can dictate the course of any and everything that our heart would desire in this physical realm so we want to give the audience something special today bro is how to manifest your reality how if you want a billion trillion dollars if you want a new house a new car a better relationship you want to uh have better you know whatever it is that you want to do it, it starts right here and this is where we create man this is where the man is created because once we figure out how we to to get this thing going then everything else falls in place so I'm gonna pause for a second, see if you have any questions or you wanted to throw something out there before I it's open a, up the book. Yeah, it's a question on the screen right there. You say, talk about the difference between spirit and soul.
bet, bet. The spirit is, is the totality or the ubiquitous energy that uh, permeates through every living thing. It's almost like if you watch Star Wars, not to make this a science fiction kind of conversation, but they say use the force, right? So there's this, this ubiquitous energy, a life force, a spirit that we can all tap into. If you um, um, look at certain ancient texts, right? So uh, there's a book uh, called The Aquarian Gospel. And the author said that he got the knowledge for the book through the Akashic Record. The Akashic Record is the ether plane, like we can tap into it, almost like uh, whatever your favorite radio station is. That music is playing right now, even if you're not tuned into it. But if you adjust your radio, you can pick it up. And so we all have the ability to tap into this spiritual um, realm that we're all a part of. Uh, now, the soul itself, uh, and I can I can give you a little bit more out of the Quran, but the soul, of, let me let me tap into this because that chapter, the creation fall, breaks this down even better than, than anything that I can give you. It's something that is uniquely given to you. Creative fate gives you a soul. And, and part of the soul, people don't really understand this. Obviously, the soul has a purpose. And the part of the attributes of the soul is thinking, reasoning, willing, and understanding. These things are invisible. You can't taste them. You can't touch them. You can't smell them. Uh, but they're real. Thinking is real. Reasoning is real. Understanding is real. And so you have to have these things. And these things are the things that come to you on the plane of soul. They're vibrating in such a way, obviously, that you can't see them. So they're frequencies that you're able to pick up. But the the, the Quran would, would say this about the soul. It says, um, now seeds are perfect. Perfect, yea, as the source from which they come. But they are not unfolded into life made manifest. The child is as perfect as the mother. So man, the seed must be deeply planted in a soil that he might grow, unfold as does the bud unfold to show the flower. The human seed that came forth from the heart of Allah was full ordained to be the Lord of the plane of soul. These are realms or dimensions that we that are happening at all times around us right now. The plane of soul and the plane of things made manifest. So Allah, the husband man of everything that is through forth this human seed into a soil of soul. It grew apace and man became a living soul and he became the Lord of all the kingdom of soul. So what happens is, and I don't wanna just keep reading off of that, but what, what happens is when you don't need the soul anymore, it does just like the body. It goes away and you become one back with the spirit. So the soul gives you the vehicle on that plane. And really what the plane of soul is, it's the spirit plane just vibrating not so quickly. So when you talk about, come on. Um, so basically is the soul the temple of the body? I mean, is the soul the temple of the spirit? right yes and the body is the temple of the soul so you have like an onion right right you have to peel these layers back right so right. you have the soul then you have the, the body i mean excuse me you have spirit then you have the soul and then you have what the we body. call the body right Bing. and then as these the body and the soul is no longer needed they drop they fall and then you go back to the source from which you came which is spirit man, right? Which is what you could say is straight consciousness, straight energy is basically what you would go back because you can prize of all the energy that's in the universe. And then and in the introduction to the truth of life, you'll, under, you'll read that the universe is not producing any new energy. All the energy that is here today is the same energy that was here from 
the proverbial beginning of time. Now the universe is expanding. However, it's not creating any new energy. So energy is just being transferred and contained and then transferred and, and moved around. So your thoughts, your, your energy, the things that we think are solid can be manipulated through understanding how to manipulate the vibrational frequency or energy. So before we get into the book, I wanted to kind of also break down a few things too. Go ahead, bro. One more question, man. I see you got yeah, a yeah, no, bunch of more questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another question. Uh, I see you got a Buddha on your chest, man. I, I, I noticed like the Asian people yeah. know how to really tap in with their chi, you know what I mean? Which they call, you know what I mean? The soul or the spirit, you know what I mean? That's why you got these Asian dudes able to break bricks with their head, you know what I mean? And break bricks with their hands and shit like that. And You know what I mean? Because they kick tapping into an inner power. You know what I mean? Bruce Lee with the one finger punch that nigga just shoot you across the room because he was able to tap into his inner chi, his power, his soul. You know what I mean? And grab that energy to where it feel like a motherfucking car just hit you off that one inch punch. Wow. But that's how much power that's in you, how much energy that's in you. You know what I mean? It's like you got the glow. You could really like really pull some shit. It's like a knockout punch. That's power. It's like pow. You know what I mean? That's all in your body, the soul, you know what I mean? But you got to connect with it, you know? Absolutely. You have enough energy just in you alone if you could harness it and tap into it to power LA, to like light up the whole city, just the energy that you possess inside of you. And so we that's really what we are. We're pure energy. And as, you know, we really get to understand the whole process of the universe it's really about manipulating the energy it, it, it actually rises above black and white and red and yellow and races all that stuff is really just low frequency vibrations to keep you down in a certain condition that way that you you can't ever reach your full energetic potential because as long as you harboring things like hatred and slander and lewdness, you can't access that, like you said, that touch that push that can push somebody across the room. You can't you can't access that energy as long as you're vibrating on a negative low frequency. You can't get to it. The best you can do is rub your socks on the carpet and touch somebody and get a little shot. That's the that's as much energy as you can muster up at that frequency. But imagine if you was able to concentrate your thoughts and focus, laser beam focus on whatever it is that you wanted to manifest, you got to know it would happen. That's the way the universe works. The universe doesn't understand no. Like if you say, I don't want no more bills. It doesn't understand no. It just understands what you're concentrating on. The thoughts that you're holding. The universe says, okay, he's thinking that he must want more of it. And so that's it. I see a couple comments down there too. Uh, uh, something about ancient Kemet. I didn't get a chance to check it out, but I, I want to make sure that we're not leaving nobody out. I can pull it back up. Hold on, I can pull it right back up. Oh, good. I thought I, I thought I seen it. There you go. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Speak on Kemet, ancient Egypt, and the influence it had on the Bible. Well, you know. If, um, the word Bible was actually taken from the word Biblios, which means Book of the Sun. And anybody that knows anything about um, ancient Kemet, you know that those are we are people of the sun. So it, it has a direct influence. In fact, um, the, the, the geographical location, the setting of the Bible uh, itself was, was mainly takes place in that particular part of of the world so um it, it has a direct connection a direct connection you know i think a lot of um the thinking that we have today i say uh kind of is new thinking and once we really get to getting back into some of the the ancient thinking and really understanding how they were perceiving life the perspective pers perspective and angles that they see in the reality then we'll, we'll understand how to really kind of put together some of the architecture and 
some of the different things that they had cracking back in, in ancient Kemet. But, you know, I always say we here now. So we got to realize that it's our time to, to be the greatest and so, uh, but, build the civilization. Go ahead, bro. Not to cut you off, but what exactly did the Bible take? from you know what i mean um kemet and um i say the uh what what they would call man um basically the 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 whole osiris isis you know what i mean and and that type that story absolutely like, what, what transferred into many religions you know what i mean not just the the bible well if you really look at most of the characters in the bible all of them studied in the ancient schools of of science that came through the hermetic and the comedic schools um if you follow the path of john the baptist as well as jesus in the bible there's 18 missing years jesus is born king herod puts out a decree to kill all the babies infant male babies under two years old and jesus flees and goes into zone egypt this is where he blends in and hides from king herod until he's approximately the age of 12. then in the bible he disappears for a while pops back up at 18 years later at the age of 30 when he, he begins his mission and most of us um, have been given the story of today. Well, in more science, in this book, this is the 18 missing years of Jesus. And it says that Jesus was in school for 18 years and he was studying and he was um, sharpening his tools and learning the lessons that he would need in um in order to fulfill his obligation here on the planet so john the baptist also was in school in halopolis which is in egypt and they learned um a lot of the customs and traditions that was given in ancient egypt how to cleanse the body cleanse the soul from the the symbolic meaning of why we take a baptism now um in church you get baptized when you receive the holy ghost or the spirit that is from ancient Egypt, um, where that actually comes from. The whole ritual is symbolic of cleaning the soul or the inside because you're getting ready to cross over an interdimensional barrier and you wanna be clean when you do that. And just a number of things, almost everything that we have in what most would consider modern day Christianity has been, um, has been uh, annexed, I guess, if you will, from our ancient African cultures, ancient Egyptian cultures, ancient Moorish cultures. So it's, it's all us for that, for that. Whoever asked that question, good question, man. No bad questions out here. I have a book of the dead. So that's Anubis. You, 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 Anubis will talk about, does your heart weigh less than a feather? And um, what that basically means that's is you... Go ahead, is that, bro. Is that Mayat? Is that Mayat? Mayat? Mayat is the certain principles. Like uh, you almost have like the Ten nope. Commandments: Thou shall not steal, Thou shall not lie. You know, Mayat is almost is not. It's almost I will not steal. I will not lie. I will not. And really, what it is like, even with this book right here, is really about mind transformation, right? And this is what the whole science is about: mind transformation and yuck believe it or not if you write down on a piece of paper 10 affirmations whatever it is you want right and you say those things every single day for 21 days you will actually start to change the chemical makeup of your brain your mind your cellular structure will start to shift to believe into manifesting those affirmations write them down sam every day out loud so you can hear yourself and you will start to reprogram your mind and that's really what it is we're just programming the mind we're shifting the energy so um yeah yeah it's, it's about that and then even with this whole book of the dead and everything like that we got to realize we don't 
ever really die. Energy cannot be destroyed. Yuck, you always been here. Reason why we cool now is because we was cool in another lifetime. Or, or you know what I'm saying, bro? The energy don't shift or change. Like energy attracts like energy. Even if it takes on different forms, it still attracts life it, like energy. And so when we talk about I'll be back or what have you, or you see a little guy and he reminds you of somebody else, it's just that energy shifting around. Jesus studied the ancient book of the dead. The brother justice, that's what I call Jesus, brother justice. You know, he, he is the, he's the poster child. He's the example of what we all can do. And that's one thing I always want to point out about the brother. We, we, we sometimes put um, our brother Jesus, brother Yahshua up on a pedestal, but he said, what I have done, all men shall do. And he also made a statement in the scriptures. He says, greater works ye shall do. So when you really think about that, yuck, Jesus is actually saying you are going to be better than me. Right? Greater works. Greater works ye shall do. Because I'm just building off of what I got. You're going to build off of not only what I got, but what the universe has given to you. The, the 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 gift that the universe has allotted to you, your portion. Plus you have the wisdom of all of the prophets and all of the ancients. We just got to tap into it now. We're in that era of time now to where we got access to it now. So I always say uh, ignorance is, is um, I had a little joke. I said, ignorance is like intentional. Like you, you, if you ignorant is because you want to be, you know. So I got to figure out how I said that, but it, it is it is that Islam copy let's we'll say Christianity Christianity Judaism Judaism copy all the Kemet teachings this is where I really want us to get to right we're going to get to a place and, and I know it's going to sound crazy so I'll make sure everybody's sitting down we're going to get to a place where there's going to be no religion right no religion when you really think about it Religion has been responsible for killing more people, for impoverishing, for uh, enslaving, for, you know, all these hurtful things. We're going to get back to the one true religion, which is really not a religion. It's just being yourself, right? A certain spirituality of existing. And when we get to that and we cut it out, uh, I'm this, you're that. Uh, I'm uh, this and uh, whoop doo. With all of that, again, we're talking about that spark when you can touch somebody with one finger and push them across the room. As long as we're holding on to these low vibrational frequencies, we can't get to that spark. We can't muster up that energy uh, because we caught up on things. We just we we, we caught up on things that that do not um, benefit us. You know, caught up in, like I said, with the book, I, I wanted to get away from, it's not a Muslim book, it's not a Christian book, it's not a Buddha book or a Hindu book. It's just a book of, of universal laws that are applicable to each and every single one of us. And that's what the introduction to the truth of life is all about. There are... When I really looked at it, yuck, with this, with the introduction to the truth of life, before we can even open the book, you know, I was having some profound um, light bulb moments, if you will, some premonitions and things. And I said to myself, man, why do we fight? Why do we hurt each other? Why do we kill each other? Why do we do bad things to one another as intelligent human beings? Why do we do that? And the answer came back to me. We do these things based on that which we disagree about. You like red, I like blue, let's kill each other. You're a Democrat, I'm a Republican, let's go to war. You're a Christian, I'm a Muslim, let's take each other's life and fight to the death. You like the Raiders, I like the Chiefs, it's a good reason to go to war today. So we do things to one another from nuclear uh, consequences to 
just fist fights based on that which we disagree about. I also understand how the universe works for every um, coin, there's a heads and a tails basically, right? So if, if it's true that we hurt each other based on the things we disagree about, then it's also true that we don't fight, we don't hurt each other, we don't kill each other, we don't harm each other based on the things that we agree about. You like rap music, I like rap music, you know what I mean? We're we, we not going to get in a fight to, uh, about what kind of music should we listen to or you like barbecue, I like barbecue. We're not going to get in a fight if I say, bro, when you come to Kansas City, I want to take you to eat some real good barbecue. You're not going to be mad at me about that if we agree. I like barbecue, you like bar. There's no fighting, there's no killing, there's no hurting where we agree. So the subtitle of the book is On This We Do Agree. And the premise is being, uh, the premise is when we agree, we move forward. A lot of people say we, let's just agree to disagree. But the fact of the matter is when we agree to disagree, we really don't go anywhere. We don't move forward or backwards. Your point is just countered by my point and we both stay where we was. We never move forward. So as we agree, then we start to move forward. So that's what this is about. Forward progress and manifesting the reality that you want to create. So the first thing we have to do is we have to say, okay, what is it that we all can agree on? I'm talking about proverbial black, white, yellow, green, purple, Christian, Muslim, Buddha, Hindu, whatever, atheist, agnostic, gay, straight, LBGTQ, whatever you are, what is it that we are, all of the human family, all the seven and a half billion people on the planet, what is it that we can all agree on? Is it politics? No. Is it religion? No. Is it sports? No. What is it? It's the truth. That's the one thing that we can all agree on. Hence the I truth think, of life. Come on, because I, I know that's where I we think, all get questions coming in. I think it's this, man. I think we really gonna need a scare. You know what I mean? Like that 9-11 shit happened and bought every fucking United States, uh, uh, every race together. Like black people weren't looking at white people, we was all together. It's going to take like that threat, you know what I mean? From some alien presence or some shit like that to make us all feel like we all human and we all got to team up to survive, period. So that type of threat come, we all, you know what I mean? Living with our motherfucking head up our ass, you know what I mean? No Frank Ocean, but everybody think they superior, they shit don't stink. You know what I mean? Think they better than the other. We all human beings, my nigga. Period. It's just like I said, the, the animal kingdom. You got different forms of cats, but they all cats. You got different forms of dogs, different colors, different fucking prints and shit, but they all dogs, my nigga. We all humans, different colors. Dip, tall nigga, skinny nigga, small nigga, big nigga, fat nigga, whatever. Long hair, short hair, bald headed, whatever it may mean. Big lips, small lips, whatever, but we all humans, no matter what period. So at the end of the day, we just don't realize that. We think that we all in some certain group that we're not the same. Like if a motherfucker is dying on in a hospital, you need a fucking liver. You ain't going to say, hey, man, I can't take a black man's liver. That went like, you're going to take that black man liver and it's going to save your life because in the inside and the outside, we all the same. But like you say, it's certain type of, you know what I mean? Racism and all types of, uh, 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 stuff that's been put out there like the willie lynch letters slavery all types of shit that got us against each other war and shit you know what i mean with different countries got us against each other you know stealing resources from each other company from oil i mean countries from oil to you know what i mean whatever it may be the diamonds the gold whatever the raw resources may be the metals that they need whatever they need to uh to make these nuclear bombs whatever they mining for to get these chips for these phones whatever you know what i mean precious resources people are going to war for shit like that you know what i mean and it's putting us against each other so it's deeper than just hating on your neighbor, my nigga. You know what I mean? It's programmed that way. You know what Boom. I mean? Boom. Boom. You hit the nail on the head. It's a program. And I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on that. But I also want to echo something that you said about uh, an alien race, right? 
um, I remember a press conference with Ronald Reagan, and he was talking about that. He's like an alien, you know, would have to come down to make us all come together, or, you know, something. So you're not the only one who's had that thought, because I, I, re I recall Ronald Reagan making a statement like that. Or just like if someone attacked America, if another country attacked America right now, we wouldn't be you black, I'm white, he's this, he, we would all be, boy, lace your boots up, everybody get strapped up. It, I don't care what it is. We gotta, we gotta come together, and we all gonna be Americans, and we gonna hold it down and defend the homeland, and then we'll get back to racism later. But at that point, when we knew it was on, all of that other stuff would go out the window, and and so that's really where I'm trying to get to the point now because it's not a physical war that we're dealing with now. We're dealing with a spiritual war, right? And so now we gotta come together. In, a, in, in consciousness, right? So we can really understand this. And you made a prolific point when you said it's a brainwashing. Here it goes like this, uh, you know, a lot of times we don't understand how it happens, but it happens with the things that we love and we like, right? So say I'm 14 years old, right? You 14 years old. What do I do? First thing I get up, I want to listen to my music, right? So I put my earbuds in. I'm rocking out to, we pop up at your party. We do the thing. <laughs> so I listen to that. You feel me? And I, that gets incoquated, right? I like that. Then I, I say, okay, that's enough music. I put the bud down, earbuds down. I pick up my game, you know? So I'm playing uh, Grand Theft Auto, you know? I'm snatching people out the car, throwing them down. I'm playing... Um, um call of duty i'm playing you know all of those you know shooter games i'm doing that for a few hours you know i got that going on then i get done with the game i turn on the tv right so this is real news going on uh man got shot today robbing a bank another person got killed today police choked out a man killed a man gas station got robbed uh, somebody shot up a school, somebody killed somebody in a movie theater, uh, somebody shot up the concert in Las Vegas, somebody uh, shot up another bunch of children on a school bus, and somebody, so I watched that for about, uh, you know, four or five hours, I turned that off, and what's, what's happening is these images, these sounds, these, this frequency is being inculcated, right? And what happens with us as human beings is we have a basic programming, a system, right, that we that is set up as we're children, you know, between certain ages, between the age of like one and five or one and seven. We got to be really careful what we put in front of our children because that actually becomes part of them, right? Becomes inculcated in them. So we don't listen to the music. We don't play the video game. We don't. Uh, turned on the news and watch the t nightly news or the television and what happens is we don't just go around acting crazy every day because that's how we act but once this is inculcated and we become provoked we have what's called a basic instinct once you get angry your ability to make rational decisions to make good thoughts um, to, to just be able to think clearly is diminished right and you go back to your basic programming. So now when you get in this argument, instead of being able to handle it any other way, your first thought is I'm pulling out the blicky because you're programmed already through everything you done listen to, everything you done watch, and you're not thinking. And when you stop thinking, you go to your basic program. Go ahead, bro. And then if you really look at this shit, man, we program, we program since we kids. If you look at school, you know what I mean? From, from preschool on up, man, the school is set up like a prison. The cafeteria, the child room is like child room in prison. You know what I mean? The goddamn classrooms like a dorm room in prison. You know what I mean? The lockers, you got lockers like you in prison. You know what I mean? The whole structure where you just can't come outside until 30, you get an hour outside for recess and then you back in the class. That's like prison. You get, you know what I mean? Get to walk the yard for an hour, then y'all got to lock back up. Same shit, my nigga. You are being programmed. So when you go there, you're used to the shit. You get the tension, that's like going to the hole. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Get suspended. You know what I mean? It's like, you know what I mean? You got transferred to another prison or some shit like that. It's the same type of shit. 
You know what I mean? We programmed since we kids. The teacher is a motherfucking, uh, as the CEO, you know what I mean? The motherfucking principal. That's the DA, you know what I mean? And the judge, you know what I mean? You know, same shit, you know? We programmed since fucking kids, straight up. Absolutely. And if you uh, try oh, not then, to go to school, then go look ahead. At the play, look at the playground. The playground is like a prison yard because it's surrounded by gates. You trapped in. And you got basketball courts, you got all the shit they got in prison, but it's behind the gate. You trapped in. So same shit. They prepare you for prison from fucking elementary. Own up. Same science. Same science. And guess what? If you don't go to school, your parents can be held responsible. They come get your mom, your dad, or whatever. They get in trouble. Uh, they'll send a truancy officer for you, come looking for you. One of my favorite movies back in the day when I was young, I know I'm telling my age, was Cooley High. I know you remember Cooley High. But the whole movie was about some guys who skip school and, you know, they go have a fun day at the zoo or whatever they do. But the, the police and the truancy officers chasing them through the whole movie because they skip school. So they got people who are actually set up to make sure that you go to school. And some people call it a, a indoctrination because when you really think about how long it takes to indoctrinate a mind, it's generally you know, K through 12, that, that's that how long it takes to really get something in there, get you really programmed. So they got the bell, you move when the bell rings, you sit down when the bell rings, you go to stand up when the bell rings, you know, it's, it, it conditions you. So uh, I've definitely, uh, I definitely am aware of elementary to the penitentiary, uh, the prison pipeline, uh, elementary to prison pipeline that that's set up. Um, but let me give you some more of this brainwashing action because it's all part of that whole bigger whole. So now you've listened to your favorite music, you've watched the news, you've played the video games, you're watching whatever you can watch on your social media that's that's feeding you, um, and you go out in the world and you get in a situation. As soon as you get up, you get angry, your ability to think goes from 10 to zero. Once you're at zero, you're not thinking, you are running on autopilot or basic instinct, right? So if you was born in, uh, I don't know, maybe in the 1920s, they would take off old white leather glove and slap you in the face and challenge you to a duel at high noon because that's just what it was at that time. If somebody makes you mad, you pull off your glove, you slap them in the face and you challenge them. If he don't take the challenge, he's yellow. You know, and you can call him out, whatever. Well, now the culture says you got to do it this way. It's all about, you know what I'm saying, knocking something down, right? That, bam. So it happens through the video games, through the music. We love music. We love video game. You know, we, and so we're not realizing we're being brainwashed. Now, let me throw this at you because it's a cold money grab thing to come out of this, con this story here. You, you want to get something in real quick? I was saying you also got to touch on not only video games, but how they showing death so much. You know what I mean? We used to have to watch Faces of Death or some crazy ass DVD to see people actually get killed on video. Right. Now you can watch the news. You can watch World Star. You can right. watch CNN and see a motherfucker get shot 15 right. times by police and be laying there dead on the ground. So we're not only playing video games that promote that shit but we looking at images that promote that shit to making people desensitized like there you we, go that's the language yeah it's making us desensitized to death and people will really pull their guns out and shoot some shit like it's called a, like they playing call of duty you know what i mean like it's nothing because right. they, desensit they desensitized to death like they see a motherfucker bleeding on the ground shot in his head pull that camera out and say world star instead of calling the ambulance and the police absolutely you know so we desensitized to death, period. And that's why more or murders, you know what I mean? Commit more shootings and shootouts with police because it's like a game of Call of Duty. They don't care. It's like a video game to them right now. And I think it's programmed for us to be desensitized, you know what I mean? To make us, you know what I mean? Destroy each other. They used to have the KKK to come in, you know what I mean? Do shit. They don't need the KKK no more. They got social media, you know what I mean? They got the news. You know what I mean? And they got the programming that with these gangs and all these type of territories that we don't own. We don't own these projects. We don't own this block. We don't own what you renting. So we're dying for these streets that we don't even own. So at the end of the day, that shit is programming and bleeding all through all fashions of just the black community, period.
That's right. Now, somebody might say, man, y'all stretching. Why y'all stretching? Check this out. It, follow the money, right? So let's say two guys get into it. Two young men get into it. Two teenage brothers get into it. They shoot it out. Who comes to the scene of the crime? The police come, right? Every police officer shows up at that crime scene is getting paid. They're getting a check. The police dog is going to get a doggy biscuit. The detective is going to get a check. The beat cop is going to get a check. The regular guy that puts out the yellow tape is going to get a check. And if somebody's not dead, they're going to jail, right? And when you go to jail, they go take you to the county jail. Well, now you're in the county jail. The sheriff is going to get a check. Sheriff's deputy is going to get a check. The people in the jail who cook the food are going to get a check. People who's supplying all the things that make the jail run get a check. Well, now you got to go to court. Well, now you show up in court. The judge is going to get a check. The public defender is going to get a check. The district attorney is going to get a check. The stenographer is going to get a check. The bailiff is going to get a check. The clerk is going to get a check. So now you leave out of court. You got, you know, blue trial and you go to prison. Now the warden's going to get a check. The deputy warden's going to get a check. The chaplain's going to get a check. The CO's going to get a check. The unit team's going to get a check. So let's, let's run back down this scenario. You brainwashingly committed a crime because we're trying to figure out why would they brainwash you? They could make, we could stop all the killings today. We can take all the guns. We can do all, we can get this place right, right now but it doesn't financially behoove the powers that be. See, when you go to jail, the police get paid, the sheriff gets paid, the jail gets paid, the judge gets paid, the prison gets paid. And I almost forgot when you get out of prison, then you got to be on parole for a couple of years. Now your parole officer gets paid, the person who takes the piss to the UA gets paid, the person who stops by and does a home visit gets paid. Police got paid, sheriff got paid, jail got paid, court got paid, prison got paid. The, the parole officer got paid all off of you. And, every, and they can still rack up 50 grand a year while you sit in prison. So it behooves them for you to act wild because why? The sheriff got to put his daughter through college. The judge got to buy another Benz. The, the warden got to build a new house. See, all of this is getting financed off of your brainwashing you commit the crime they they gave you all of the music all of the videos all of the news then you commit the crime and 10 different entities get paid i'm going to keep pushing crime in your neighborhood i'm going to keep pushing crime on tv because i'm getting paid See, it all goes back to the money. And the brainwashing is you think that you tough. You think that you're going to shoot and kill everybody that opposes you. You Somehow you think that all of that's going to add up to the nice house, the nice car, the nice wife or woman or man or whatever you got cracking. And none of it amounts to nothing. But because you don't understand how to differentiate fact from fiction you think it's real what's going on when really all of it is is you're being brainwashed and manipulated for a dollar and you just keep going right through the cycle as soon as you get off parole you go right back to jail again catch a new case you gotta still gotta go back to court gotta get the new uh, get a new attorney gotta get a new it's all for the money yuck then look the new shit they doing you know, uh, free young thug, free gunner, free all them dudes that got arrested. Talking to my brother yeah. about that today. Yeah, you see how they're using gangbang ties, you know what I mean, to give these rappers the Rico charge. Rico. You know? So not only is they influence you with this entertainment and this news and these video games and shit, these movies and shit, but they are letting you join these gangs down there about to round you niggas up on Rico charges and, and gang injunctions and shit for the entertainers. Like, okay, cool. It's cool for the black dude. It ain't cool for the black dudes, but okay, that was getting the black dudes. But they're knocking down multi millionaires with this shit, my nigga. So it's a whole nother game that out there. They like they using it, they tricking the board. 
You know what I mean? They they put a, a OWAP in the matrix for, for them to be able, a cheat code in the matrix for them to be able to just round up people that just even was born in the gang neighborhood. Like I assume it was some people that got arrested that just had a chain on that probably did, didn't do shit. Gunner is one of them. Gunner right. ain't do shit. You know what I mean? He just wore chain. He in videos. He talking about slap. You were guilty by affiliation. He ain't allegedly ain't did. Got no supercharges. Just being guilty, but that's a millionaire. That's a rapper that's established that just got snatched up on a fucking Rico and can't get a bond of being affiliated with a fucking gang. So it's getting deeper than just, you don't even have to do the crime no more. You could just be affiliated. That's right. So what you got to say about that one? It's, it's, it's about power and influence. See, when you reach a certain level as an artist, you have influence. That's even more um, concerning for some than money. When you have the ability to go online. Say that, say that shit again. Follow man. You. That's why, say that again. That's why they got rid of Malcolm X, man. Too much power. Too that's much what, influence. That's really say what that it again. is. That's what it is. And with the social media, when you have mega stars. See, first of all, this genre of music that we do this thing of ours bro this is the number one genre of music on the planet it's the most powerful form of communicative energy that's that's known to man right now because what happened is if you take it back just on some you know we get out there with the conversation you go back to the tower of babel according to um the bible um god breaks it down he makes all these different languages right so people can't communicate well, rap music is one language of communicating all around the planet. We reconnected a global network, a one world order or whatever. And the brothers that are able to demonstrate it at a proficiently, demonstrate proficiently at a high level, which means they garner a lot of attention. These guys have the influence. They're, they're just like on social media, influencers, right? And so when they see this, they say, well, we have to be able to control the narrative. We're going to be able to control the influencers. And so now you see an overwhelming, you see Fetty Wap gone. You see uh, all the young brothers, they Rico acting them. They say, we don't care about your status, how what a celebrity you are. We don't care about none of that. We locking you up and you're not getting a bond. Now, this sends a message across like a shockwave across our universe saying, man, look what the other side is doing. And so, you know, we got to wake up and realize that a lot of this is a setup. You know, they gave us the give us the tools and, and then they come in and lock us up for, for building a car. Go ahead. Nah, I was, just, I was just agreeing with you, man. I was just agreeing with you, man. You absolutely fucking right, man. It's a motherfucking setup, man. And my thing is this, man. Niggas got to take responsibility, too, because you don't have to fall for the banana in the tailpipe. That's right. It was a choice. You know what I mean? You didn't have to do a three-letter game for your record label name. You could have said Young Thug Records. You know what I mean? And that wouldn't have been a gang record label. You know what right. I mean? You can't name your fucking record label a gang. Period. You should night the name is Death Row, My Pyro. If he would have named that shit My Pyro, that's a gang injunction, nigga, the whole record label, period. So they naming their record labels, these three-letter gangs and shit that they got going on, that they started. These are new gangs. This ain't that basic blood and crip. This is a, a new addition, the new uh, uh, new millennial bloods and crips. These are new sections that them bounced off, clicks within the bloods and crips. You know what I mean? That they made they self, and it's fully running like a motherfucking set that was from Compton or something. You know what I mean? So they set these sets up. They create this shit allegedly. You know what I mean? And boom, just from the hype of being a banker, they promoting this shit from Colors, Minister Society, you know what I mean? Boys in the Hood, you know what I mean? American, I mean, uh, uh, uh shit. All the fucking gangbang type of movies that have people throwing flags and shit that made them want to throw a flag, that taught the world how to gangbang, then gangsta hip hop. You know what I mean? Where niggas is banging on wax and shit, throwing flags up in the videos and shit. You got the New York niggas 
throwing their flags up in the videos with the red and all the shit. So Pop wearing his shit, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, yeah, go ahead. No, it's, it's part of that brainwashing, right? It's part of that, like I said, you know, we listen to certain music, we watch certain things on TV, we play certain video games, right? So they glorified, you know, certain lifestyles have been glorified. They make movies about it. They, you know, we watch The Wire, we watch Colors, we watch New Jack City, we watch, you know, we watch all of these these different movies to where they glorify certain things. And so just like with anything else, you see it, you want to be a part of it. And then there's some people that will tell you straight up, bro, I got involved because, you know, the conditions in my neighborhood were, you know, not favorable, but I was trying to change my conditions. Well, all of the stuff that any reason why you got into it, it's almost just like if you get picked up on the streets, they say anything you say can and will be used against you. So anything that you do is gonna be used against you. We get ready to mech we get ready to weaponize and mechanize the whole situation because we understand that we're at a shift right now. This is a shift, bro, that we're in. A lot of people can see it, maybe some don't, but we're at a cultural shift right now to where um, it's a changing of the guard, if you will. And the European that we used to know, he is no longer, uh, he's like on his way out. And with all due respect, there's a, there's a politician by the name of Pat Buchanan. And Pat Buchanan wrote a book called Death of the West. Death of the West. You can look it up. And he talks about infant mortality and the death rate of Europeans, not only here in America, but also in Europe. And the fact of the matter is, um, Europeans proverbial, you know, quote, unquote, white folks, um, with all due respect, they're just not reproducing babies at the rate in which they're dying. Um, right after World War II here in America, we had a baby boom. It was a giant population explosion after the men came home from the war. There was tons of babies made. Well, we're working on 75, 80 years ago when that was. So now that big population explosion we're going to see a big population death. And so there's some the remnant of a bygone culture who doesn't want to see things change. The new European kid, his favorite artist is 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 Yuck Mouth. His favorite athlete is LeBron James. His favorite, you know, everybody is is us. You feel me? Like we said last time, they love us. It's just the remnant of that past bygone era. You know that is still trying to hold on to some um, some sim semblance of what they used to have, when it's just over for them. And so, what we have to do now is be careful because it's almost like my 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 grandmother used to say, uh, you know, the devil. And again, I'm not talking about no particular individual. He don't want you to go to heaven because he can't go to heaven. You know what I'm saying? He want to take you down because he's going down. And, you know, our thing now is to be intelligent now, is to, 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 to be woke or conscious, if you will, and try to analyze, okay, what is it that we're dealing with here? And again, back to the book, understand what, why, when, where we are, and then start to put ourselves in a position to maximize the experience. We got all the resources. We got everything we need. Now we just got to get this mind shifted. We got to change our thinking. That's the shit I that's the shit I always ask myself every day. Like, why do everybody in the world want to be black but the black people? Black people, we hate the shit out of each other, but everybody wanna be us. It's like, nigga, yeah, if you don't recognize you the truth, you know what I mean, and you that motherfucker, man, and your peoples that you, you know what I mean, that look like you is that motherfucker, cause everybody trying to be you and imitate you, man. I don't know what the fuck more of a message do you need. Like you could go to Russia, you could go to fucking china and see dudes that look like the migos the chinese edition with all the dreads and shit you know what i mean the tattoos on their face the jewelry and everything and and fucking drill rapping and trap rapping way in china and japan looking like us so if they want to be us why the fuck are we so mad at us and being us that's always been my question exactly 
there are big UFOs showing up in Ukraine that the news is not showing you. You know, my whole thing is we got to watch even stuff like that. Not, not saying that none of it is, I won't even say it's true or false, but we have to watch distractions, right? Because while now we coming together, right? If me and you, we, we coming together having this conversation, you know, it's other brothers like us that's having this conversation in Texas and in New York or Kansas City or Minneapolis, Minnesota or, or wherever you might be, St. Louis, right? And then we hear some information that, that sounds so wild, it takes our attention off of building with us and now we thinking about something that's happening on the other side of the water, you know, 5,000 miles away, which is cool. But at the same time, until our conditions get to where we need to be, I look at a lot of that stuff and I say, okay, that's cool. Uh, but right now we got to really focus on this next generation, put them in a position to win. And, uh, you know, we can look at the UFOs over there. You know, we had that conversation last week. So, you never know what that, that is. I can't really say 100% in fact, but I can say that right now, the only thing that's going to make us, uh, put us in a better situation is unity. And so it's about coming together, man. I think everything that's been done in the past uh, from different black laws to, you know, certain um, state laws and different ordinances, a lot of it has been to add confusion to whatever it is that's that 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 is the glue that keeps us together as as a people right and so there's there's a certain thing called data dumping and what data dumping is is say i give you the truth about something but then i give you so much other information that it 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 muddies and bogs down the truth so two plus two is four. We know that. But I done gave you all the Pythagorean theorem and algebra and I told you this and gave you some calculus and went all around the world because what I'm doing is, even though the truth is right there in front of you, I got you distracted now. So we want to make sure that we stay focused. And that is really basically understanding this one major principle. And that is your thoughts create your reality. If you don't like your reality, change your thoughts. See, the whole universe is mental. You know, is people going to be debating you? Are we living in a, a hologram? Do we live in a this? Do we live in a third dimension, the fourth dimension? Where are we at? But it, it, it starts here. We have to understand that our thoughts create the reality. That's how powerful our brain is, our mind is, to where the universe has to acquiesce or bend to our will. It has to happen. It's just universal laws, how it goes. But uh, I wanted to read you a little piece of this preface, if I could, and then maybe the audience can, can uh, check in on this. And this is from the introduction to the truth of life. It says, in order for you to effect the monumental systemic change that must be confronted for the betterment of self, society, the environment, nature, and all of humanity. This is getting you together, it's getting me together, it's getting our nation together, it's getting our situation together, it's putting us all where we're supposed to be in the right order, in our proper person. The first thing you as an individual human being must do is think about what, where, when, why, and who you are. You must examine, investigate, and inspect self thoroughly and in detail. You as an individual must open your mind to the possibility that everything that you've been taught that you do not know to be an absolute truth is a lie. The next thing you must do is unite with other individuals who are combining collectively and amalgamating as one body based on that which every individual unanimously agrees you along with other individuals are the mental as well as the physical material that gives form to the abstract body of the church collective consciousness the temple human race the human family etc humanity 
as the body of the hum of humanity only has its objective reality and thought not having a physical concrete existence its ubiquitous influence is felt by all mankind the only criteria for being a part of the body are that we agree the notion that we cannot agree to that we can agree to disagree neutralizes the forward or onward mo mo movement towards the mutually desired destination or course of action by applying an opposite force or effect concerning any problematic unwelcome or harmful matter or situation in the body to agree to disagree is tantamount to doing nothing to resolve the issue on which we disagree and will eventually lead to infirmity or destruction of the body Jesus is quoted in the book of Matthew as having stated every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand so we have to have unity we got to come together if nothing else in the fact that we all believe our conditions can be better we can have a better condition as as just who we are uh, however you identify I call us the conscious community go ahead bro and then boom back to uh back to um the race thing about the caucasians uh i mean not the caucasians but the europeans are, are you know what i mean fading away or whatever it's I all think, good i think i think all races are fading away i think the new race is going to be a hybrid because there's a lot of interracial dating going on and, and right, that's right. What, what the babies are half this big half, part of half this half that so that's going to be the new race you know what i mean it ain't going to be too many straight black people straight mexican people straight white people it's gonna be half this half that you know what i mean because everybody's crossbreeding right now you know what i mean so that's the new race that's gonna be superior over everything that's what everybody recreating that crossbreed it's not real pure black on black and pure white on white it's like black right. and white black and mexican mexican and asian like white and asian like you know what i mean like it's it's everybody yeah. up besides well, what they real own race you know eventually it will in the way it began right with one people see there were one people melanated on the planet originally and then it um branched off into other groups of people so what happens with you and i for example you are an indigenous original person so back in the day when racism was really heavy it, it's a, a more overt i guess uh, they said if you had one drop of black blood in you, then you were black. You can be a light skinned, blonde hair, blue eyed, but if you had some some black in you, then you were black, so to speak. So what what what's going to eventually happen is, if you just put it like this, if you had ten kids, little children, three year old, four year olds, and they were all in one nursery playing around, five of them was what we call black, and five of them was called was what we call white. And they all played together and grew up and intermingled. Eventually, there would be no white people because they would all end up being some shade of brown or uh, um, olive hue, melanated from either light to the dark. However, there's there's always going to be that that darker gene because you're not going to be able to. Um, fade it out unless there is an intentional scientific experiment going on it's just too many indigenous people on the planet when you look at um all of the, the brothers and sisters in africa all the brothers and sisters in india you know you go over to hindustan and pakistan and all those places a lot of them people are darker than you and i are you know you go down to some of the places in central and south america those people are darker than you and I are. Some places in Mexico, they're darker than you and I are. So there's just really a small percentage of what we would call Caucasians. And because of things like you said, the amalgamating and marrying amongst the races. And not only that is there's there's a phenomenon that happened with the European. Back in the day, back when we used to watch uh, Leave it to Beaver with uh, the Beaver and all of them, the, the man went to work, the wife stayed home and had babies and created the family and was a homemaker. So it went something like this. You get a uh, Jack and Diane 
from Bruce Springsteen, you know, let me tell you about Jack and Diane. So you get Jack and Diane. They come out of high school. They get married. Diane starts having babies. Jack goes on to whatever he's working at and takes care of the house. Well, today what happens is Diane says, I'm not having no babies. I want to go to college. Well, because one, there's never been a woman president. There's this glass ceiling that you have put on these that the European male put on the European female, right? And so she's in a place now where you told me the only thing I could be was barefoot and pregnant. Well, I want to run the Fortune 500 company now. I want to run the hedge fund. I want to be the CEO of this particular private bank or I want to run this or I want to run that. I want to be the president of the United States, in fact. I don't want to just be home and pregnant, barefoot and pregnant. So the European female started saying, I'm going to college. And so she got married and went to college, didn't have children. Then after college, well, nowadays you got to specialize in a certain field. So you got to go to a couple more years of school to get uh, uh, in that particular field that you want to be in. Well, now you're out of school. You want to make partner at your firm. So you're not having no family. You're you're working now so you could put yourself in a position to run the company or what have you. Well, by the time you look up, you're 45 years old. You don't have any children and you need in vitro. You need the octomom. You need a surrogate mom. You need a... You can't have every baby you try to have is this miscarriaging and miscarriaging because the European female postponed her family for her career to compete with the uni the European male. Meanwhile, little Guadalupe, she 23 years old, got five children. Little Shaniqua in the projects, she got four children and three baby daddies and pregnant right now so we're steady having babies we're steady reproducing we're steady uh multiplying as they say we don't die we multiply we baby's kids i'm talking about our latino brothers and sisters from the brown community they having babies everybody's having babies even though we're all mixing and mangling but our little sisters are not not going for the you know when we're we're still reproducing where the european um, the European woman is mixing with other races. She's waiting longer before she starts her family because she has her career. You have this LGBTQ movement uh, to where if you are a female and you're dating another female, you're probably not going to get pregnant. Or if you're a male and you're dating another man, you're probably not going to be producing babies. So there's a lot of factors that's playing in to reproducing pure white babies. And this is what the whole premise of white supremacy is based on, keeping this pure race above and ahead of everybody else. Well, it's over. It's game over now. So we, the ones who've been on the bottom, have to just really understand all we got to do is stand up and, and, and we can control the, our own narrative not trying to control nobody else's narrative. We're just trying to control our own situation so we can uh, put our children in a better position. Right on, uh, RIP Kevin Samuels. I know that's been the conversation going on for a good minute. And I know you touched on that too at one, uh, one no, point. Be, no, last because, week. because exactly what you're saying is what Kevin Samuels is saying. Like the women are too much in, in competition with finances with dudes and they're not focusing on the family life they don't want to be the wife they don't want to be you know what i mean the nurturer of the home no more they want to be the financier of the home you know what i mean and have the, the boyfriend at the house you know what i mean taking the kids to school and shit so it's definitely reverse role going on just That's not just in america just all around the planet period women are more superior they got more money right now they in higher positions because they hire a female before they hire a dude you know what i mean period so that's that's what's going down. Females get more money right now, and it's well, fucked up, you know. Especially in our community, see, we in the community that we're part of, it's the only community, to my knowledge, where our female makes more money than we do, has more home ownership, higher rate of home ownership than we have, uh, has more businesses uh, where they're the sole proprietors and and 
uh, home-based businesses and startup businesses in every other culture. If you go look at the, at our Latino, the, the, if you want to say the, the Mexicans or what have you, the man still is the breadwinner. If you look at the European, um, right now the, the European female is arguing about this wage differential where the European man might make a dollar and his counterpart female is only making 75 cents. So she's still making, he still makes more than she does. And it's the same in every other community except in our community. In our community, our women got more education because we go to prison, they go to college. So when they go to college, they put themselves in position to make more money, have they're better educated, they can get to have access to more things. Meanwhile, you and I, we out in the, we, we, we hustling to live. We, we out here trying to, you know, get it. But at the same time, our sisters have been given purposely a leg up. Even if you look at it from a lower, a lower um, degree, if you look at the sister that lives in the projects, they're going to tell her, we'll give you rent for $18 a month, but you can't have no man living there with you. Better not be nobody had no work boots in there. Better not be no blue collar uh, button down shirt hanging up in there where I know this guy been getting up and going to work every day. So what we're going to do, sisters, we're going to make you divorce your man and start dating us, which is welfare, food stamps, uh, WIC program, uh, all of the benefits that the Section state eight. can give you. Section 8. Section 8. And let me break this down, Yuck, because, again, we're talking about the brainwashing going in, right? So now you this female and you thinking, I don't need no man. I don't need nobody. I'm mama and daddy. I'm this and that. Well, no man can take the place in a child's life of his mother or that female figure, grandma, uh, big mama, whoever. And no woman can take the role of a man whether it be papa, big uncle, daddy, stepdaddy, some figure of a man. See, it's been scientifically proven that all children learn best through same-sex imitation. Same-sex imitation. That means a little olive melanated boy is going to learn best from a grown olive melanated man. A little European girl is going to learn best from a little European, from a big European woman. We learn best through same-sex imitation. It, it comes, it, it, it also raises itself as a point of contention when you talk about us in that third grade, fourth grade classroom setting where we just come out of the house with big mama and everybody. We listen to people that look like us, smell like us talk to us a certain way, the energy is a certain way, then we're told to go sit down in this classroom and listen to this little white girl who just graduated from K-State University and she's only 22 years old and you think that you're going to be able to handle little Jamal? You think you're going to tell little JJ sit down when you don't sound nothing like Big Mama? You don't have that same presence in your voice as Auntie? No, you're not going to be able to control these little brothers running around in that classroom because they're not, they're just coming into your classroom from big mamas. Big mama said, sit down and gave you that look. And then you sat down. This little European girl that just got out of college doesn't have like, like Kanye said, you don't got the answers, Sway. She don't got the answers for you and me because she's not, she didn't come up in that environment. So, I, what, what I was was wanting to break down was this um, this whole brainwashing thing too, though. See, when we um, understand that the, the 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 nature of the beast is for us to see ourselves through their lens, then we stop seeing ourselves as who we truly are. If if that really makes sense, so. When they have us in positions to where we are, we're, we're to be learning and to be uh, advancing, understanding our environment, then they, they, they try to confuse us. And this is where we, we run into the, to the situations. So um, I'm, I got off track a little bit, but 
I know I was trying to circle back to the fact that we're the only group of people to where our women make more money than the men. And then, you know, we have to figure out how we're going to have a relationship now when the roles have been reversed. Um, you know, it's it, we're living in a, in, in a certain time now where there has been a role reversal, so to speak. And so we, we've got this, uh, you know, um, a switching of masculine and feminine energy out there between the genders and you know you see it all around and so a lot of it is confusing uh to to try to figure out what's what's real and what ain't but uh where, where was we at when i was when i switched it up uh yuck you still with us okay here we go this is I, like I i'm here i'm here i'm, I'm weed i got I'm, you no i've I'm seen reading, this uh i'm reading the willie lynch letter you know what okay I mean? cool cool that, that's, yeah that's it was something it i was talking about but i lost that, that train that, of thought but it's yeah, all yeah that, that's that's where it start with the willie lynch you know what i mean oh, yeah the dude said i got the method yeah you know what i mean what do you say i have full proof that the method for controlling your slaves i guarantee every one of you that um if installed correctly it will control slaves for at least 300 years my method is simple any family of your i mean any any member of your family or overseer can use it I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves, and I make these differences and make them bigger. I use fear, distrust, envy, and control purposes. You dig? These methods have worked on the modest plantation in the West Indies, and it will work throughout the South. Uh, take this little list of examples, and yada, 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 yada. Okay, boom. The second is color or shade. This is intelligence, sex, size sizes of plantation status whatever boo boo yada 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 let me get to where they talk about you know what i mean okay distrust distrust is stronger than trust envy is uh, stronger than um adulation respect and admiration the black slaves are receiving this in indoctrination that I'll carry on and will self refine in hundreds of years let me get to the real letter man where he ha actually said what they need to do okay distrust black slaves will depend on us whoa, 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 whoa. well basically you know what i mean long story short he said that with the willie lynch he would put the young against the old that's right and against the woman child against you know what i mean the female child against the woman the, the mother the male child against the male father and so on and so on the man against the wife you know what i mean the wife right. against the man this is the Willie Winch. They use with color, you know what I mean? Jealousy, envy, you know what I mean? And different sizes, whatever. This dude is bigger than you. He can fight better. You pick more crops than you, whatever. Make the jealousy shit go down. You know what I mean? And that's what got niggas going against each other to this fucking day. Bitches are mad. It's an act of psychology, right? It's a psychological right. trick. But it's, on, but it's only on us. So the shit it's is- Only on us. We, it, it, we, don't, we don't look sideways at the white person. We don't look sideways at the Asian person. We always look sideways at each other. Like, oh, look at this nigga. What shoes he got on? Oh, look at this bitch. She thinks she's right. bad. She got a BBL. Oh, look at this nigga. He think he the nigga because he hanging with this nigga. Oh, look at that nigga. He pulled up in this. Like, we always, like, an Asian nigga pull up in the same shit and we don't say nothing. Nothing we about it, right. An African nigga pull up in the same shit. We don't say nothing. But when it's somebody black, we own it. Like, yeah, fuck that nigga. Or, you know what I mean? Even with the stereotype shit, you know what I mean? You can see a group of these black kids walking down the street and you want to clutch up and grab your thing or something. You, you know what I mean? But the same group of white kids walking down the street, you don't give a fuck. You walk right through that crowd of white kids and don't give a fuck. So not only is we hating on each other and going against each other, we stereotype to where we against each other. Like we look at each other as the enemy instead of, you know, just being our brother or our sister. You know what I mean? So the Willie Lynch shit is, I never thought, that shit will ever happen, you know what I mean? Because I read this shit in the 80s, you know what I mean? When we was all united, when it was positive raps, we was wearing African medallions with African owners shit, beads and shit. You know, you had fucking public enemy, brand Nubians, everybody was 5%ers and Muslims and shit. We had knowledge of self, all that. So right. I'm reading the Willie Lynch letters back then. I'm like, this shit would never happen. We too unified, self-destruction, all the shit going down. We got, we we unified, we love black pride. I'm black and I'm proud, all that type right. of shit going down right now in 2022 that motherfucking letter is running rampant running hard on the people we all against each other right now like a motherfucker and i never thought i'd see that shit 
Just like I never thought I'd see a black president. I'm seeing shit that I never thought I'd see in my motherfucking life. And the Willie Lynch letter is exactly what the fuck is going down in the black community. I'm sorry. Well, let's, un let's unpack it, though, because there's some good news. There's a silver lining to the cloud because I'm with you 100 percent on that. The, the, the silver lining is this. The letter said. If you employ these methods, they will keep you keep you having your slaves or keep you with a slave or having slaves for three to four hundred years. And the time is up on there. If you look at the time when they documented the first slaves or what have you, we know that the, the, the numbers may not necessarily be true, but they said 1916, right? Um, is, is when they came into, or 1619 rather, I'm sorry, 1619 um, was when they started bringing slaves over here to these Americas right here. And so when, when we came into the 2000s, now things don't just happen overnight, but from 1619 to 2019 is 400 years. And let, me, so, let me tap in with that. Go ahead, bro. That's when they came to the Americas, bro. We was already fucking here, my nigga. That's right. Every time I talk to an African brother, they don't have no history about a slave trade coming to America. Some guy coming to Africa and taking Africans on the ship back to America. That never happened to them. They never heard that story. We just got right. that story in America. You know, if it, if it really happened, you'll see these historical slave ships in museums and shit. You'll have statues and shit of these sellers, these dudes who traveled the seven seas and shit with these slaves. You'll have big ass statues and monuments of these people. Like, where is this motherfucking make-believe Santa Claus slave trip that ever went down, my nigga? Like, this, the dudes who piloting the motherfucking boat can't survive that long without food and the supply for that long to sell that long, my nigga. Like, you going by the wind. You ain't got no jet power or nothing. Like on the motherfucking Caribbean cruise, you can't get there that fast. And right. with all these, see how much food that Caribbean cruise got on it to feed all them people and shit. That's as much people coming back on a fucking slave ship. Right. Food and, like Walmart. that had to be a mega, super mega ass shit. But it has to sell. It don't have no power. So a ship that goddamn heavy. Come on, man. That's that shit is like that shit is realistically impossible. Realistically impossible. Plus, we were here already. Water. We were here already. Here the already. Great flood, the great flood split up the nations. When the great flood happened, shit split up and the water split up the nations. But it was all one together. Period. We was all over this motherfucker, right? And Fact. that's why they that's why they say we Asiatics because it was called Asia at first before the breakup, right? Come on, yuck. That's right. right? That's right. right. Okay. That's so right. We, we yeah, Asiatics, you know yeah, I mean? we was we was we was already over here. Um it's it's no math the math that you would need to bring millions of people over here is just not doable. The water that you would need to sustain these people on a journey that's gonna last four to six months. Um, you're talking about people being shackled and chained, you know, head to toe, ankle to ankle. And these people got to use the bathroom. They got to urinate. They got to defecate. You know, all of this stuff that's going on, it, it, it couldn't have, it could not have been possible to drag all those people over here and then destroy all the, all of the vessels. Um, if you go back and you look at Europeans when they were coming over to America, you can see these big boats, these big pictures and boats of people coming into Ellis Island in New York. People coming over when America sent out the cry, uh, "Send us your your poor, your tired, your huddled masses." You know, people start coming from all over Europe, and it's documented. You can see the boats, you can see the ledgers, you can see where they touch down the ports, you can see all of that. There's none of that when it talks about this uh, transatlantic slave trade. Then there's no tribe in Africa. You got to think about this. Africa, and the reason why we're not African-Americans, a lot of people don't understand you're not an African-American. Say that again. We are not, because we didn't come from Africa. We was already fucking here, man. African-American. 
the reason one of the reasons why you're not an African American because the term African American is an oxymoron. That means it is a term that cancels itself out. Because uh, it, it says I'm a white man, white man. Because Africa was named after Africanus, right? Well, there's some different um renditions Africanus, of that. There, there is was, a there was a general named Leo Africanus right. who conquered uh, a portion of Africa, and the, the, there's going to be some that say that the entire continent was named after him. But there's going to be also some that's going to say that he was in portion named after the continent. But this is the thing. About uh, okay. The thing about it is, you can't be an African American because Africa is a continent with over 50 nations on the continent. They speak over 1,800 different dialects, French, German, English, Bantu, Bantu, Swahili. You know, it's over 1,800 different dialects on the continent of Africa. Also, there are over 50 different nations. So take Barack Obama, for example. He wouldn't be an African-American. He'd be a Kenyan-American because his dad is from Kenya which is a nation on the continent of Africa. Just like America, the United States of America is on the continent of North America. That's like you being a North American, but guess what? Mexico's on the continent of North America too. Canada is on the continent of North America too, but you're not a Canadian, you're not a Mexican, you're American because you belong to a nation that's on the continent of North America. Just like we would have to belong to a nation that's on the continent of Africa. We cannot tie a nation to a continent. It does not work. So for all of us running around hey, African American, you just, you just it broke don't work. Whole, you just broke that whole shit down, man. Preach, man. Preach, man. I just learned Facts. something new, man. Period. Facts, bro. So we cannot there's no shape, form, or fashion that you can ever be an African American. You would have to be tied to a nation on the continent of Africa, from Morocco to Tripoli to Egypt to whatever. Like I said, Kenya with Barack Obama. So we got to get away from that. You know, and I said before, the reason why they called us African Americans, because they were trying to trick us um, from knowing that we were already here. You're an American American. There's not no part of Africa on you. And if you was from Africa, what nation lost you? Like you were saying, there's no boats, there's no records, there's no nation over on the continent of Africa saying, yo, we lost 2 million people. Because if there was, that nation would be asking for reparations from America and the other continents that took the people. You took 1 million people from my nation, I need some I need some payback. Somebody needs to give me some money. But there's not one out of all those nations that said we're missing members of our nation that are gone. Family members are gone. Uncles, aunts, my grandpa's missing. Nobody is saying that because we were never over there uh, in that capacity. Now, we were over there trading and, and doing business because we traveled and circumnavigated the whole world. Um, there's a story you could look it up. It's called the case of the cocaine mummy and this mummy is Thousands and thousands of years old They go and they excavate his tomb and they do some uh, Research and they run his blood and they find a little bone marrow find out this brother has cocaine in his system well ancient Egyptians and ancient Comedians um, use cocaine, same way we use cocaine for recreation, but also for medicine. Just like you have morphine, you're going to do some surgery, you got to numb somebody. You have all these different drugs. They were doing brain surgery. They were amputating uh, limbs. They were doing all kinds of stuff back in ancient Kemet. And so they found out that they had cocaine. Now, here's the, here's the problem with that. Cocaine comes from Peru. Peru is in South and Central America. It's not in Africa. So what are these guys in Africa doing with Peruvian cocaine? 
We were already over here. We'd been over here buying and trading and selling and uh, using stuff. They said that uh, when Columbus landed first on the islands where he hit, the indigenous people had gold tipped spears. They had these certain spears that came from the continent of Africa. So we were doing all kind of trading and had sailed over there. They'd been over here. America's pretty much been a melting pot uh, for thousands of years. It just didn't turn into a melting pot today. People from all over the world have come here and bartered and traded and, and uh, went back home with different goods and services that they obtained while they were over here. If you really look at America, you know, I have a verse where I say sliding through ancient cities showing love to the Magi. America is built on top of ancient cities. Like New York is built on top of a city that was already there. Uh, St. Louis and Chicago and other places in California were, if you dig down in the, and, and go down a couple uh, layers of earth, it's, it's uh, cities that these cities are built on top of. Uh, there is a city right outside of St. Louis in East St. Louis, which would be Illinois. It's called the Cahokia Mounds. It's a hundred foot mound pyramid right in the middle of the Midwest. What is a pyramid doing sitting on the bank of the Mississippi River outside of St. Louis? We was already here. We were here. The only yeah. That it could be. You're talking about the pyramids that line up with the stars, that face true north, that do all the stuff that the pyramids over in Egypt do. There's pyramids in Central and South America uh, that some predate the pyramids over in central and south or excuse me over in egypt if you look up the oldest camel bones like uh, one of the animals the ancient animal that is in the bible is a camel there's some ancient animals on the planet crocodiles ancient the camel is ancient if you look up the oldest camel bones you can find you'll find that they're in kansas Camel bones in western Kansas, 12,000 years old. Well, this used to be a desert as, at one point in time. Just like over where the pyramids is, used to be a lush rainforest. All around the pyramids, it was lush vegetation. Now it's sand. So we have to also process the thought that we, when we hold of the ancient time, we have to go back and, and also process the conditions because sometimes we try to think of ancient times in the in modern terms, and it just it doesn't process that way. We we get lost. Go ahead, bro. I'm glad you said that, man. You just threw me an alley oop, man. Like goddamn Westbrook to LeBron. I, 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 you get bye. All right, so let me get this question to you, mate. With that being said, man, do you think history repeats itself? And also, um, with the ancient text, do you think we're in the days of revelations? All right. Um, yes, I think history does repeat itself. Uh, we have what's called psycho ages. Uh, anybody who's familiar with uh, the, the zodiac calendar or the celestial calendar knows that um, you can map out time according to the stars because everything runs in, in psycho ages, right? And, uh, and then are we in the last days? Yeah, we in the last days. That's factual. Now, let me say this. The last days does not mean uh, the end of the planet, like the earth is going to blow up or explode. Uh, it just means it's the beginning of a new era of time. We go through these cycles. We had an industrial age, a revolution age, an electronic age. We had a, you know, when whenever man makes progress in leaps and bounds, uh, we can measure, you know, we measure it by an age. So, uh, we have progress now to the point to where uh, we can start to look at the signs and the symbols and start to at least, we you know, the scripture says no man knows the time or the hour. I look at it like this. The, the, the age touch of time has already come and passed. We're living in the future now, if you will. We're living in our own future because we can create and um, manifest pretty much whatever we want. All the technology is here. We're steadily, rapidly moving forward. 
Um, when you look at the biblical signs, it says rumors of war and war. Well, there's war going on right now. There's rumors of war. It said you'll be able to see the sun and the moon at the same time. There's been times when I've been driving down the street. I look out the one window on the driver's side. It's the sun. Look out the window on the passenger side. There's the moon at the same time. So um, it said we will be able to see that. It says we'll see the coming and going of a generation. So we're starting to see the, the end of the baby boomer generation. Uh, that old generation, every day you look up, one of them jokers is gone. Rush Limbaugh, gone. Uh, this person, gone. This old senator, gone. Old person, one of the Supreme Court justices, gone. You know, all these uh, people are going. But yet we're also paying attention to the incoming of a new generation. And that's what they call the indigo babies. These babies come in, already know how to work your phone, work your computer, work your laptop, download, uh, make videos, do whatever. And they can't even walk or talk or read and write. They just tapped in to the technology. So we, we're, we're seeing this new generation come on the scene. Uh, if you will, the techies and the code writers and, the, you know, those children that uh, come in with the code and everything. So um, we're at that time, man. We're at that time. But it's a good thing because now uh, we, we're going to get rid of a lot of the stereotypes, a lot of the falsehood, a lot of the old uh, lines of division that's been holding us back. And we can start getting into the real um, uniting of humanity, you know, because every nation on earth wants peace. Everybody want love. Everybody want to want to feel like they're um, wanted, feel like they included, feel like they got somebody that appreciates them. All that good stuff I'm talking about as an individual, but nations, too. Everybody wants love, um, but we can't do it the way it's rocking. It's been going. Because we've had a group of individuals who have been so selfish and wicked and evil and maniacal that they have basically fought, had had us all fighting each other so they could stay in power. So now when I walk outside, I look at the euro and go, that's my enemy. Now nah, that white guy, if you will, the white guy, he's not my enemy. He I ain't got no problem with that guy. He ain't did nothing to me. In fact, he's scratching, trying to feed his family and make a living just like I'm trying to feed my family. But they'll have me believing that that's my foe. And they'll have him thinking that I'm the reason he doesn't have a job or he can't feed his family or he don't make as much money. So the only way that the uh, numerical minority can control the numerical majority is to cause confusion and have the majority fighting. It's just like a prison yard, right? So say it's uh, 10 COs out on the yard. Well, it's 500 convicts on the yard, but we're not going to let 500 Crips out because they're going to organize and walk, beat us up and take over. We're not going to let 500 Bloods out. So we're going to let uh, a small group, we're going to let uh, 10 or 20 Bloods out, 10 or 20 Crips out, 10 or 20 Black Muslims 20, 10 or 20 Aryan Brotherhood, 10 or 20, uh, the, the, the Serrano, 20, 10 or 20 of the, the, the Northern Serrano and the Southern Mexicans. And, and then now we can control that because nobody likes nobody. The Moors, they don't like the Aryan Brotherhood. The Aryan Brotherhood, they don't like the Black Gorilla family. The black gorillas into it with the Muslim, the Al Islam. They don't like the, the hell's angels, the hell, you know? And so now we can control it because we're going to keep ourselves in check because ain't, we're not going to let the, the, the Mexicans ain't going to let the brothers rise up too tough because it's going to be a, a war or the, the Aryan brotherhood ain't going to let the other side go. So that's basically us. We're like you said, the elementary to the penitentiary, even though we think we're out, we're on the other side of the walls, it's really being demonstrated the same way. Like you said, pit this group against this group and let them go at it. We'll clean up the dead bodies at the end of the fight, throw everybody else in prison, continue to perpetuate the, the war and the violence, 
And then this little family, if it's the Rockefellers or the DuPonts or the, the, uh, uh, the, what's the big one with the, with all the banks, you know, uh, whatever the families are, you know, and the, the queen, you got, nigga, you got to go over there to the, 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 the queen, boy, the list, yeah, gotta you got go all the blue bloods and all, all the, the blue blood, the, who ops, the yeah. Rothschild. I was trying to think of Rothschild, styles, right? Cause but look, you know, and so you got these, they say it's 12 families. I don't know what it is. Don't, don't get me up here like that, but it's a certain families that say we're not tripping on politics. We just want to control the money and we want to make sure that we control the bank and we control the narrative and then we'll run everything else. It's just like over here in the United States of America, the federal reserve has absolutely nothing to do with our federal government. It's an independent private entity that controls our economy. And, and why is that? Well, we can, we can get into that too. Well, we America our corporate. next episode. America is a corporation. We definitely gonna go on that. We but gotta back, go on that. Back to the end of days, man. Um, yeah. Back to the revelations type of, um, the, the reason why I think we living in revelations. It ain't just with the war. He said, you will see signs, man. You know, we have birds falling out the sky. You've been seeing like hundreds of dead birds on the road. We didn't see fish wash up ashore just dead. Thousands of fucking fish and shit just dying. You just seen cattle and crop just laid out on the side of the goddamn farm and shit just dead. So you seeing fucking signs left and right. I ain't never seen birds just drop out the sky and just be dead on the fucking ground from nothing. Nobody shot them. Nobody was hunting. They just fucking dead. Thousands of birds is all covering up the freeway, blocking the freeway. Thousands of fish, you know what I mean, cover the whole motherfucking beach to where nobody could be on the beach. You know what I mean? You got big fish, little fish, all types of motherfuckers just dead. So with this being said, my nigga, like, it is the real, it said you hear the trumpets. Like, we had a president called Donald Trump. Like all this shit is, is yeah, like man. really, yeah, all this shit is adding up. Like them scriptures is really hitting hard right now because everything is said in the revelation scriptures is really happening in real fucking life. That's what make it spooky, my nigga. You ain't never just looked at this shit like God. Oh, damn. So, bro, uh, you know, in the scripture, King Nebuchadnezzar has this dream. If you're familiar with Shadrach, Meshach, Bendigo, King Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel, the book of Daniel. He has this dream and he asks Daniel to interpret it. And he's, he talks about this statue. It's gold on the top and then it's silver in the chest and it's bronze legs and then the feet are bronze mixed with clay and basically tells how this, this statue is going to crumble because at the base of it, it, it becomes mixed and weakened. And we talked about uh, with all the interracial couples and the mixing and all of that stuff going on. It's, it's really a reference unto that. See, another reason why we know we're at the end of time is because everything has been pushed to the limit, almost like a pendulum. If the pendulum swings so far to one side, it comes to a point where it can't do anything but swing back the opposite direction. So when you look at just the culture itself, when you look at, say, women, for example, not saying nothing bad, but they got blue hair, red hair, green hair, yellow hair, gray hair, you know, all of the, every kind of, you can't figure out any more uh, ways to, to dye or color the hair. Or you look at uh, tattoos, for example, uh, brothers got, you know, back in the day, you might have some tats, but now brothers got their whole face tatted, the arm sleeved out, the back, the chest, the legs, the, you know, um, it's a certain level of anarchy, they say, at the end of time when you can tell it's the end of time because people stop um, adhering to cultural norms and just start going outside of the line. Like, you know, a person with his whole face tattooed is not trying to get a job. He's not going to the post office thinking I'm going to get a job and a career. You know, he's, he's on to his own thing. So from the hair to the tattoos to uh, the hypersexual nature of our world today, at the end of cultures, the sexual lines, they blend. And so now we have all these different communities 
um, to where in the beginning of a culture, everything is rigid by the lines. You know, the military is straight. The, the guys are this is that. The guys are guys. The girls are girls. We, we have boys school over here, girls school over there. Um, towards the end of the thing, when the lines are blurred, there's really no uh, up or down or left or right. You know, it's the end of that great empire. It happened with Rome. Well, I'll start. It happened with ancient Egypt. Egypt was an empire. Just think about it. It stood over 2,000 years. We've basically been here for like 400 and some change. They, they ran the whole place for 2,000 years. And that was just one of the dynasties. So you had, it went down. Egypt went down. She rose, she fell. Uh, ancient Greece rose, fell. Ancient Rome. Rome was such a powerhouse. Rome was so powerful. It was on three different continents and had a civilian population of well over 20 million people. You know, that's, that's, that's a, that's a whole big empire. It went down and the same thing will happen to America. Um, eventually she'll go down because we haven't figured out how to deal with some of the systemic issues that America has to deal with. And one of them is slavery. We talked about the African-American diaspora and America until she recognizes slavery and what she did to our people, our ancestors, our forefathers and foremothers, she can't stand. And, and I don't want to say this in, in being gloomy or down, but the reality is um, there's something called generational curses. You cannot rape, lynch, kidnap, um, sell, buy. Uh, you can't, you cannot do that to a people and think that nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. You cannot put that type of energy into the universe and think that there will not be an equal and opposite reaction. And so one thing that I'm so encouraged about when I talk to people that look like me, young people, I, I say that the universe is math and the science tells us the harder or the more force you would bounce a ball or push the ball down, the higher it's going to go up. So we was knocked down, we was pushed down, we got beat down, but that's we, we will rise that high. The highest heights are attained by those who have reached the deepest depths. And so we, we go, well, come on. Not to cut you off, but no. back back to Revelations, it says Babylon will fall. You know what I mean? The merchants, you know what I mean? They used to trade and do their shit with stop fucking with Babylon. It'd be this, that, and the third in Babylon. Do you think America is the modern day Babylon? Well, according to all the descriptions, the descriptions of Babylon, the book said that, that there was a mystery Babylon. Um, and Babylon was described as a place where, you know, kind of like Vegas, you know, anything goes, you can do whatever you want. And um, yeah, anything that has a beginning will also have an end. And so if there was a time when America did wasn't the, the, the number one power in the world, there'll be a, a time when it's not the number one power again. Now, having said that, we're, we're getting back into a one world setup again. So um, I think that we can, we're, we're, we're not going to be defined by geographical borders and landmass anymore. Right now, we're defined by borders to where I think we're going to be defined by uh, nations as in people um here this next round and so we gonna run the world because we demonstrate love we we came from the bottom we 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 here now we god's people and reason why i say we god's people it's not because we got this melanated skin and all of that some people we black we god's people no it's because scripture said um we were the least of these said the last shall be first and we have been the last and so we got to be the first. Nobody on the planet 
has suffered the type of slavery that we went through. You know, I hear often the detractors say, oh, there was slavery in Africa, or, you know, every nation has been enslaved. The Irish were enslaved, the so-and-so were Jews were enslaved. And, you know, I, I, I empathize and sympathize with everybody's plight, but nobody, nobody on the planet was done the way we was done. And I, I want to use my, my good Jewish brothers and sisters as the example, because I love them. Um, if you was named Whoopi Goldberg prior to Adolf Hitler and the Holocaust, your name was Whoopi Goldberg while you were in Auschwitz, while you were in that concentration camp. If you survived, if you lived that horrible experience, your name was still Whoopi Goldberg when you got out of there. If you spoke Yiddish prior to the experience with Adolf Hitler, you spoke Yiddish while you was in the camp, you spoke Yiddish if you managed to get out of it and you were able to hopefully pass on a little Yiddish to your children. If you believed in Yahweh or, Yash or whoever your God was, Jehovah, I believe. If you believed in Jehovah prior to Auschwitz and uh, the Holocaust and dealing with Hitler and that whole experience, you still had Jehovah after it was over. See, our experience, we didn't have our language after we got, we lost our, our, our demonstration. We didn't have our God. We didn't have our language. We didn't have our last names. See, in the book of Daniel, it tells you how to make a slave. And I know we're running, running this thing up, so I'm going to keep running until you pull the clock on me, man. In the book of Daniel, it, it tells you how to make a slave, right? It talks about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I touched on it earlier. But it said the first thing that you have to do when you make a slave is you have to change their diet. So in the story in the Bible, the king had his chef prepare food for the Hebrew boys. And they told the chef, man, we'll eat the vegetables, but we're not going to eat the meat. And the chef said, man, check this out. If you don't eat this food, the king will come and do something to me, basically. I'm paraphrasing. So they made a deal with the chef. They said, if you let us eat what we want, we'll work harder, longer, and better and faster than any other slaves. And they did that. The next thing that you have to do is when you create a slave is you have to change their name. See, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that's not their names. That was the name they was given to them. They actually had some other Hebrew names. Daniel's name, in fact, and in the book of Daniel, his name was changed to Balthazar. So they changed his name. The last thing that you have to do if you're going to create a slave is you have to change their God. And in that story, the king says, when you hear these trumpets go, you need to fall on your face and worship this idol God. Well, of course, they didn't do it. And they got thrown in the fiery furnace. Now, if you believe that story or not, some people believe in the Bible, some don't. I'm not trying to get you to change your faith, but I want you to look at our story. First thing they had to do, we got to change their diet. Well, if you're used to eating fresh fruits and vegetables and figs and berries and herbs and nuts and grubs, now you're going to eat chitlins or you're going to eat catfish, which is basically the bottom feeder of the, of the, of the river. Or if it's today, you're going to eat Taco Bell. You're going to eat McDonald's. You're going to eat Burger King. That's all you're going to eat. So the first thing to affect your algorithm is we're going to change your diet. Second thing is we're going to change your name. See, your last name ain't Jones. My last name really ain't Nelson. We just don't know our last names. So I choose to put the ill on there to let people know that I am conscious. I'm Nelson ill, but at the same point in time, for real, Nelson is a European Portuguese name, a Spaniard's name. Spain is in Europe. It's a, Nelson is a Spaniard or Portuguese. So they changed our, our food. They changed our name. And then lastly, 
changed our God. And the fact of the matter is, when you really look at it from our ancient forefathers and ancestors, you are God, yuck mouth. God resides inside of you. The scripture says you can low here or low there, but the kingdom is within. Low means to look. You can look over there, you can look over here, but the kingdom is inside. And when they were able to get us to abandon that thought, then and only then were they able to create the slave that we look back when we see Django and all of that stuff. So we get back to putting God back in you. And scripture says, I am a jealous God. I shall have no other God before me. See, when you put another person, another consciousness, another entity outside of you, in front of you, then that's preferring another God. You don't want to prefer no other God. That's how we got here, chasing after the gods of Europe of which we knew nothing. You know, I love the movie Shaka Zulu. Shaka said, uh, they was talking about Jesus and Shaka said, your God has a birthday? You know, cause they was talking about Christmas and celebrating Jesus, Jesus' God and his birthday. Shaka said, my God don't got no birthday. Shaka, Shaka. Shaka was real, man. He said, basically, the European came to Africa with the Bible and the Asiatic had all the land. When it was all over, the Asiatic had the Bible and the European had all the land. So we got to get back to us. And that's why I go back to your original question. I believe time moves in cycles because we got away from us. And now we just going to get right on back to us. And when we get back to us, we get back to the love. We get back to the laughter. We get back to the creative spirit that created the pyramids and the Sphinx and created all these wonders of the world. We get back to elevating and thought and mind. We can get back to all that stuff. You talk about the astral projection and, and being able to time travel, and quantum physics and quantum leaping. And we get into all of that because when we get back to who we are, we get back to, to the creation itself, the creator. Hey. Hey, before we get up out of here, I want to go back to the original subject, man. You said you was talking about the beginning of creation and what it was our purpose. Can you land on that before we get up out of here? Man, let me just, I can't, I, I, I gotta, I gotta just go ahead and just, just end it with this, man. And it, t it gives you the uh, understanding, right? So I got about our life, through. our purpose in life and the whole shit that, that the purpose, I'm going to let me give you my purpose before I jump into that. The purpose in life, yuck is to create heaven on earth. That's your whole goal. You are supposed to be at one in peace, at one with the universe, in harmony, in tune with the harmonies of life. And what happens is, if I just let you alone and I don't bother you, you're gonna create heaven, right? You're gonna only eat the food you want. You're gonna only go to places you wanna go. You're only going to deal with the people that you want to deal with. You will create your heaven, right? And as we all do that collectively, then we create a new heaven and a new earth. So your purpose in life is actually to create heaven. That's what you do. Like the birds and birds and bees, everybody's got you create harmony and peace you create heaven that's that's really what your your higher power is all about about suppressing the lower self and the lower frequencies and creating heaven this this place that can't nobody seem to find right the place we look all up behind the moon and in the clouds and on the other side of the sun we got to create it we got to so that's what it is. And the scripture will say, man, our purpose is to unfold and become back one with the perfectedness of life. Uh, back one with the source from which we come. You're like a flower. You're a seed that got planted in the soil. You have to first bust through that dirt, come out that dirt, grow up, tend upwards towards the sun, blossom, unfold spread your seed, be fruitful and multiply. 
then go back to the source from which you came. And next time when we get on, get on, we could talk about reincarnation. Oh talk, shit! Some of us are here solving problems from two or three lifetimes ago, and this is the reason why we can't seem to get ahead because we're still dealing with things from our past lifetime. Okay, we're going to end it on this too because it's saying the scripture, as is above shall be below. We that, that. No, create your own heaven because heaven is above. It can be below. And we're going to end it on that, man. Another motherfucking night of high learning, man. Nelson L, man, you went in, my G. Gave us a lot of knowledge without going to college. You feel me? And that's what we're supposed to be doing, man. Each one teach one, man. So we're going to be back here, same bat time, same back channel every motherfucking Thursday with high learning, man. Nelson L, man. We're going to talk about that reincarnation next week, man. That's the shit I'm into, man. That, that shit that people don't talk about. Get that book, too, man. Promote what you got going, bro. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, make sure you go on Amazon. You can pick up uh, The Introduction to the Truth of Life by Nelson L. Or, or you can go to MoorishAmericanArt.com. You can pick up a hard copy of the album. Uh, I tell people to get it. It's a collector's edition. That CD, I know we're in a new era town now, but that's the, the last physical uh, form of media that, that we got. So you could put it up. You could pass it to your children. Uh, get it autographed, whatever, man. You know what I'm saying? Just grab it, support the movement, higher learning, my smoke a lot, radio, the whole nine, man. We here now. Peace. Yo, yo, everybody that's in the Bay Area, man, catch me in San Jose, man, tomorrow. You know what I mean? Pull up for the old school uh, fiesta. You know what I mean? Get your tickets at the old school fiesta.com. It's going to have motherfucking... Uh, Lisa Lisa, Too Short, DJ Quick, Too Loud Crew, nigga Tina, uh, shit, hella, <laughs> Rodney O, I mean, not Rodney O, a lot of shade of brown, and too deep, man, hella people, man, I can't, Mellow Man Ace, Ooh. like, about to be crazy, man, I think, no. they, yeah, man, I th oh, Rodney O, yeah, it's gonna have Rodney O, yep, Rodney O gonna be in that motherfucker, man, so yeah, man, it's about to be Lynn San Jose tomorrow, man, y'all pull up and fuck with the kid, man. On Saturday, we're going to be at another function, man, getting down. Let me look at that joy. Oh, yeah, old school. Okay, boom, hold on. Da, da, da. Let me see. Uh, okay, anyway, man, I'll get up on this motherfucker, man. Just check my IG, man. Follow me on IG, and I'll give all the locations for the one on Saturday. You know what I mean? But Friday, we at the Old School Fiesta, man. Get the tickets at OldSchoolFiesta.com, man. That shit going to be lit, man. Hopefully, I can buy some tickets right now, man. But San Jose, wake your game up. We're going to be in the building. I'm going to be at Purple Lotus, man, doing an in-store on Saturday. You know what I mean? Shout out Purple Lotus. We going to get that motherfucking Yuck Mouth Collado drop up in that bitch. You feel me? And we turn it up, man. You feel me? I'll see y'all this weekend, man. Salute to you, Nelson L. You have a blessed weekend, too, my brother. And salute to everybody in the chat. Shout out to Shaniqua. Shout out to E. Millie. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. We've been great time with y'all y'all been throwing up great questions you know what i mean great intellect you know what i mean interacting with us and that's the dope shit about live man we can interact with our folks man and really get the knowledge without going to college you dig high learning man with your nigga yuck mouth and nelson l man we see y'all next week man we out this bitch yada da boy boy yuck mouth tv subscribe to your guy guy you dig man good shit man salute to all y'all man we out man Hit them goddamn subscribe buttons, man. Let's get to the 40 40 Club, man. We almost there, man. Hit them subscribes. Hit them notifications, man, because I do all type of content on this motherfucker, man. Period, man. You never know what I'm going to go, man. Ain't shit scheduled. We just take it to a whole nother level, man. Yuck Mouth TV, subscribe to your motherfucking guy. Let's go, Turbo. Get it up. Bye.